All right, guys, what's going on? It's Josh. Uh, what I'm going to talk about here today is the question, is Bitcoin dead? And even with that, I think it's a, it's a two-part question that everybody kind of needs to answer. There's going to be the differentiation between Bitcoin itself and then all these other currencies. And now I've been asked this question a lot. I've seen a lot of news articles. You know, I have a few over that I want to go over. One's a really good one, actually, uh, talking about it. And also, it just it just seems like that's been talked about. You know, there's a lot of things going on, you know, with it. There's it may be confusing for some and may some people have already formed their opinion, you know, especially, you know, you bought in at fifteen, twenty thousand dollars coin for Bitcoin, or you were trying to speculate on some of the altcoins. You got killed uh, pretty much bigger than anything this year. Nothing has gone down that much, you know. And like I said, you know, being involved with the stock trading, the markets, everything, it keeps coming up. You see this on CNBC. They bring people to talk about it. We're even seeing good news coming out of places like South Korea, which are starting to actually recognize it. And, you know, say you could start with, you know, they're recognizing Bitcoin exchanges when last year or earlier you know during the the big bubble people were really talking about hey you can't really do that uh, you know the the countries were not down with it and that caused a big decline so there is some good things happening and you know really i guess i'll answer the question do i think bitcoin is dead not at all uh for cryptocurrencies my you know the rest of them my my thoughts have always remained the same uh towards them and those those altcoins and whatnot there are a few projects that i like there's a few projects that i think will be able to stand but you know if bitcoin is starting to prove to be more like any other financial asset than anything so based on that alone statistically most of those other coins will fail but there is still a good one a mix of good ones in the pot so getting to answer and showing you guys you know is bitcoin dead i disagree completely you know there's one thing that's good about it as the price dropped yes but does that mean that bitcoin is going to go anywhere not at all um it's because a lot of people are have been investing in the blockchain uh, I've even been helping private funds acquire stuff for the blockchain and the, the technology, you know, it's not like Bitcoin has been hacked yet. No one's hacked Bitcoin. No one's found a way. Have they hacked the social exchanges or the or the uh, Bitcoin exchanges and all that stuff? Yes, but they haven't gotten the other stuff. So that's kind of important to look at when you're putting this all together because Bitcoin's good, but there is been a a social hit on Bitcoin. You know, it's not the same that thing that people like about it. You know, people aren't looking into it as much, but a good thing, I don't know if it was in this article, maybe we'll go over, uh, no, where was it? It was, uh, here's some five reasons, but the, you know, a lot of people socially are, are still scared about it. And now that they've seen it, oh, they're writing it off. You saw these people rush in, you know, it, it's been pretty much on par with being a scam because of how some of these ICOs and how people just ran off with money treated it. But that being said, still, it doesn't change the fact that such a small percentage of the population actually owns any cryptocurrency. I think it's like 1%. So, you know, if you do the math on that, that's like people who were doing yoga in 2002, 2004. And, you know, take a look at the yoga industry now and how big it is. You know, it's almost ballooned 10 times. Now, another thing to even put into context is what we could relate this crash to. And, you know, they even talked about it in some of these articles, I think. Um, yeah, uh, it's, you know, Bitcoin plunge and Bitcoin's price has been drawn comparisons with the Nasdaq sharp fall in 2000, which is a hundred percent accurate and that's what that's what i think is going on here because if you guys go look at the stock market in 2000 when you know 2000 2001 it was the same exact thing the internet started to to proliferate people were making internet companies you slap www on any stock it went to the moon literally you know that's it's the same phrases and everything you got pump and dump stocks, penny stocks. The same thing happened. It was just more regulated and accepted. It didn't have some of the other hurdles Bitcoin had, but exact same thing happened. And now, you know, they washed out and they, they started quickly running back up by, you know, two, three years later. And that's what there's a chart, a cool chart here, which we'll go over as well, which will be, you know, all of the Bitcoin crashes and kind of the percentages and how long it took to recover because now, that's the thing. It will take time and we don't know we don't know the time, but that's where some people now a good thing about people saying that 
crypto is dead is that it starts to put in the sentiment now that we're at a bottom and that people are like, okay, it's bottoming out. It's bottoming out. When in reality, it's still up from $2,500, you know, year to year to year period, you know, or year to date. So it's kind of crazy to think about in that sense. But so I I think it is more like the dot-com bubble. It's washing out, it's cleaning the house and you know, what's going to happen with that. It will make something more stable now that is for bitcoin that doesn't necessarily apply for cryptocurrency in general now that's why i said some of those projects will wash out because they are not fit to standard they're not fit to raise that much money you know that's something i've talked about in some of my other cryptocurrency videos was how the valuation on some of these assets it was just insane they didn't own anything and they're being valued at more than something with ipo they you don't even know the people running it you've never used the technology that that's a penny stock that's that's a scam you know but there are some that are very very solid and can make it so i guess the two or the three i don't know people want me to talk about eos i own a little bit but i don't know much about it um it has a good market cap and doing well i'll do more research on it but oh excuse me on the other end ripple and xrp xrp ripple and uh, ethereum I think Ethereum will last. I think Ethereum, smart contract, everything about it. Golden, I don't think that's going anywhere. Um, and then I like the NEO too. That's the NEO. I sound like a foreigner. Um, but it's the Chinese uh, Ethereum essentially. And I, I like what they're doing. Uh, I know a lot of people in China. We have businesses there. And it's it's a good cut. It's, you know, people use it there. XRP, it has a lot of adoption, but, it, you know, I'm still worried about that flow. I think it could it maybe could last, but... I'm still on the fence with that, but Ethereum, Bitcoin, I, I think they're going to be here for a long time. And I think it's just, you know, you're like I said, that sentiment's coming in and it's being more of a healthy correction. So we'll go over, this was a cool article I found on Medium and it was saying, you know, here are five reasons why it's not dead. Cryptocurrency prices rose exponentially and declined slowly. So that is actually a great fact because, you know, the big crashes, 1987 on the stock market and 2008, the dot com, all those. They just crashed and they crashed faster than they went up. You know, in Bitcoin's case, it was the other way around. You know, Bitcoin has been going up for a really, really long time. People just don't realize that. So when it drops this much, it hasn't been as if it went straight back to a thousand dollars, three hundred dollars at the price to which I bought my Bitcoin. You know, it is dropping slowly, and that's actually more in- indicative of a healthy correction, like it says. But at the same time, this brings up some of the questions of, is this now a commodity? Is it going to trade like a commodity? Is it going to trade in a tight range? I'm going to make another video on that because I think that's important, but it, it's, it's a possibility. You know, It's going to take time for things to flesh out, but again, that can happen as fast as, as possible. You don't know. And you know, a, another big thing, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I did with the amount of people own wallets now. A lot of people already own wallets, so I think things could take off a lot quicker. They're getting a lot of the exchanges laws in place, so I think when the time does come around, it will be easier for people to adopt. It will be a lot harder to get scammed, a lot harder to get into stuff. It's Again, it's just like when the internet started, and I think that will allow adoption to just take off. So another one, it said the blockchain and smart contract technology remains intact. That's what we talked about because that was a big, big factor for mine. Nothing has changed. You know, this what's behind these currencies has not changed. Sure, people have, are using it to make other cryptocurrencies and that, but it's not like anybody's hacked Bitcoin yet or Ethereum. So now, uh, again, with the wallet base, we have over 24 million uh, block uh, blockchain wallet users. So this is different than when I stated. I was stating the amount of the total population that owns it. This is just saying, you know, you're getting a 15% increase since the end of last year which is 100% year-on-year growth, which is great. You have that many more people getting wallets. But for me, I'm looking at the rest of the world. And at the end of the day, when you put 24 million blockchain wallets into perspective, you know, there's more people in California, uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, And, you know, there's 360 million in the United States, uh, 1.5 billion in China, another billion people in India. You know, there's a lot more wallets that can be created, and that and that is where I'm looking for future growth. Is this going to cease to exist? And no, because those countries with those big populations have more of a use value than here in America and some of the more advanced places, because we're we're just using it for gambling <laughs> or you know investment. So. That's good. Uh, more businesses than ever are accepting cryptocurrency as payment for goods and service. This is true. And another thing is, like I'm saying, 
go look around all the news, they are making a lot of moves. Even though the price has been declining, anybody who has invested in this technology and knows what it could become, they are still moving forward. They are still trying to get it integrated with their companies, and it's, it's just all around out there. So that is one of the good things and one of the good signs. Otherwise, you know, if it was dead, people would stop doing it. But again, think back to 2001. You know, it's Google was still working on what they were doing because even after the crash, you know, they weren't. I don't think they were publicly traded at that time. But you know, putting it in a perspective, people don't just stop if they actually understand this and know how to create value out of it. But a lot of the other things that are scams did stop. So lastly, saying we've been here before and now here are all those crashes. And this is also what I want to talk about because there is something unique to what we're going through now. You know, I think I think we breached below 59, but it's saying 48 days from December to February 18th. So now we're in July. So I think that's another February, June, July, add another 60 days. That's like at 108 days, which would be the longest correction, but not necessarily, and, and almost close to the second largest uh, or third largest correction. But these corrections that happen here, I don't really count these because this was early on in in the platform. It was still pretty bad, you know. But once it finally got to 700, back down to 300, then up to a thousand, then two. This was a real big one, and it crashed really fast. But what happened it stayed it happened for a long time and this is where i was starting to pick up my bitcoin and i got in because this was a very very downturn people this is where people again forgot about bitcoin you know i wouldn't say they called it dead but they forgot about it but then again it was not nearly it was not nearly as adopted as it is today and then it didn't get any publicity or anything so this is going to be interesting to see how this compares to this you have this one again in april but again look at the levels of the price but since then, it's been 30% drops and, you know, none of the corrections lasted really more than a month except for this one. So this was kind of necessary for the market. We see what it's doing and we see it going down. But I think this crash is more unique and it looks more like a solid downtrend than anything because you're not seeing these huge, massive drops. You're just seeing a slow and steady decline. And there's reasons why people sold, you know, people did get nervous. People get did get scared. They bought high. They had to sell. A lot more people have been day trading it, which has been, you know, that that always will exasperate these moves. But lastly, taxes. You guys don't remember Coinbase and everybody with taxes. I sold off for taxes. A lot of people sold off for taxes and, and how to get this stuff straight. So it makes a lot of sense why this is going on. But putting this all in the perspective, hopefully you guys see, you know, other guys are coming out recently and saying Bitcoin's not dead. Uh, what, what's the, you know, what? It's not dead yet. Oh, I thought there was a, a, you know, a catalyst to that or something at the end of that. But uh, essentially, putting this all in a all in a perspective, you know, you'll see that a lot of 90% of other currencies have died already. You know, people are saying all sorts of stuff. It's very interesting to see now talking about this point. It is bad, you know, it, with all the other altcoins. I'm not too big of a fan of them. <clears throat> I haven't been, you know, I haven't been gambling on them. <clears throat> like I suggested in my other videos, because the volatility is not there. You need the money for these. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with my throat, but you need the money coming in and the hype coming in for you to be able to make plays on these shitty assets where you're trying to make a flip on something, you know, isn't worth the, I guess the code it's printed on, you know, there's no paper, but in this case though, the, some of the main ones, the ones that have proven themselves, I don't think they're dead yet. Uh, and I don't even want to say yet. I don't think they will die. I think this is just natural. And again, you get this. It's it's starting to act like a real financial asset. And then again, a lot of the people who've adopted it early, they don't have experience with this, or they're very anti-financial institution or how this stuff works. So, you know, their loss is your advantage, and and you guys got to understand what that's going to mean. So, I'll leave that there. Hope you guys like this. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you did, please subscribe. Please like the video and give me some questions you guys would like me to make on this. And, you know, hodl all day. Uh, hold strong. Be smart. Don't be dumb. Please don't speculate as much. And to uh, just, just be smart. Thank you. I love you.